Hello, I'm Dylan. And I'm Keon. This is Triple Play That Podcast with a tin foil unicorn, because this month we watched The Predator. Written by Fred Decker and Shane Black. Directed by Shane Black. <laughs> Released on September 14th, 2018. <laughs> I don't know how to start this episode. I guess with a... With a, if you haven't seen this movie, there's obviously going to be spoilers in this episode. <laughs> Duh. Uh, as we always say when we watch a, a, a new release like Insidious and The First Purge. Yeah, this year has actually been been uh, pretty much the first time we've watched new releases. Yeah. We've been doing one every couple well, of months. Probably the last <laughs> Yeah, for a while. <laughs> for a while, sure. And this was definitely the weakest of those new releases that we that we watched, which isn't to say like Insidious, the last key was great or anything. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You know, I, you know, I don't know about that statement. I, mean, I don't know. Insidious was pretty bad. You don't think that this was worse than Insidious? Uh, I mean, I, I, yeah, but I had more fun with this than I did <laughs> with Insidious, honestly. <laughs> to be honest. The only thing that really made Insidious fun were those people who were like, ah, oh, hell nah, no. in the middle of the movie. <laughs> no, no, okay, but like, this one was maybe fun because of just how much of a train wreck it was. Just, you know, minute by minute, it just, the, 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 the train just derailed further and further. But like Insidious, you know, halfway through, they're like, all right, there's, there's some way they can salvage this. Somewhere, like, they can reach deep and like pull this movie out from the grave it's dug itself into. But with this, there was just no hope. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but uh, you're the most anti-objectivist viewpoint on this podcast, so... Sure, I mean, yeah, if you had more fun with this, then yeah, maybe it was better, but I think it was just far worse. <laughs> but as we usually do, we can we can describe the whole sort of experience of going to watch it. <laughs> well, first I want to talk about how I follow the production of this movie pretty closely, because... Oh, really? <laughs> I really rather enjoyed Shane Black's previous movie, which was The Nice Guys, which I thought was... One of the best movies of 2016, I guess, yeah, is I've, when they came out. I've heard really good things about that movie. People have told me, like, yeah, you need to watch The Nice Guys. And I, I mean, I didn't do it, but <laughs> yeah, I think to you show should, them, no. Because I, I think it'll redeem Shane Black in, <laughs> in your eyes. Well, we can also re-point out that Shane Black was in Predator. <laughs> yeah, the, the first Predator. Right. He this played... is another, like, confusingly named entry into a franchise. <laughs> <laughs> Shane Some Black. baffling reason. Shane Black played the guy with glasses in the first Predator. Yeah. He's also, like, not a bad screenwriter nor a bad director. So, you know, I don't know where this movie went off the rails. I think it was all the studio interference in the, like, two months of reshoots they did <laughs> to, like, completely change the plot of this movie. Maybe it was Fred Decker. I don't know who Fred yeah, maybe Decker it was is. Fred Decker. I don't know who Fred Decker is. I've never heard of his name <laughs> before in my life. So, you know, that's usually the moment where we look up what he's done and make fun of all the crappy movies he's done. Wow. He did uh, RoboCop Robo 3. <laughs> RoboCop 3, yeah, that's the one that sort of jumps <laughs> off the page there. Godzilla, King of Monsters in 3D, unproduced screenplay. Lethal Weapon 4, uncredited. He was also the director on RoboCop 3. So, hmm. I don't know what that says about him. But anyway, I follow this movie pretty closely because, like I said, I, I rather enjoyed Shane Black's previous movies. So I was like, oh, man, Shane Black's doing another movie. It's going to be pretty good. And he's doing a <laughs> the movie. And the first trailer came out. And I was like, okay, I'm a little worried now. This looks pretty bad. <laughs> and the second trailer came out. And I was like, this is, this is looking worse. <laughs> then I saw the movie, and I was like, yeah, trailers didn't really do it justice <laughs> about how bad it was. <laughs> you mean the, tra the bad trailers made it seem better than it actually was? Yeah. <laughs> In my God. opinion. Uh, apparently, you know, Shane Black wrote the script and he's like, you know, we're going to re-eventize the Predator. We're going to make it like an mean? event movie again. I, I, I guess the does Predators that... wasn't really considered like an event movie. What, what is that? Like, does that just mean a movie that's like a big deal? It's yeah. an event to go and yeah, see? Yeah, I think so. Oh. <laughs> All right. I mean... And, you know, the, f the first kind of rumblings of this movie wasn't going to be super great. Where, you know, I, I was reading these Reddit threads and people were like, you know, a lot of people at the like test screenings were like, this kid that only shows up for 10 seconds in the trailer is like a really big, important part of the movie. And I was like, <laughs> you know, any movie where the kid is like a big, important part of the movie is, is, is pretty much immediately bad in my book. It's pretty much impossible it's to just, make a movie like that good. Yeah. 
It's just difficult. It's just no, there's not a good. Uh, well, I mean, I guess I should qualify that statement. Of, like, Any movie that's not like a coming of age story or like about the trials and tribulations of being a kid uh, that features a kid as the lead character is pretty difficult to make good. <laughs> Uh, you know, and this is a movie about a monster coming in from space. So a movie like that with a kid is the lead character is pretty difficult to make good. I mean, Stranger Things is like the exception that proves the rule here. You know, that's a movie about a government experiment. But at the same time, it's actually really about like growing up as a kid and, and how difficult it is to be or to make friends when you're a social outcast. So really, it's more about trials and well, tribulations of being a kid than it is about the government facility that's like right outside the town <laughs> well you also gotta think like child actors are usually are pretty bad usually, well yeah not that the adult actors in this were I mean great. you know I'll, gi- I'll give the kid in this movie some fair credit for actually being like a halfway decent actor uh, I don't know I don't know about that I actually recognized a lot of the actors from this movie. I don't, like, know from where, but, like, pe- people's faces were showing up. I was like, I know that person. I recognized, yeah, I guess we'll talk about this now. I recognized uh, Thomas Jane, who played the guy with Tourette's, whose name I don't remember, uh, from The Expanse, which is a TV show that I've mentioned quite often, I think, on Zenith uh, and Trust Your Doctor, because it's one of my favorite television shows of all time. I recognized Keegan-Michael Key, who plays the guy who killed on his own squad. <laughs> Again, I don't remember their names. I mean, I basically remember that entire, or recognized that entire group. I actually much. didn't. I recognized those two. I recognized Olivia Munn, who plays one of two female characters in this movie. I actually recognized really the other... stepping up from Predator. <laughs> I actually recognized the other woman in this movie. I don't remember her name. Wait, who was the other... The, was the other female the wife. character the mom? Yeah, the wife. Who of appears the for like two the, seconds for yeah. a few jokes. She, she was played by uh, this, this, this actress who appeared in this TV show called Chuck, which I've been watching with my parents. Chuck is a pretty... You don't have to go this TV show called Chuck. It's a pretty famous, famous show. I mean... <laughs> famous. Okay. I went. I also went with this TV show called The Expanse. So, I mean, I gotta be consistent, yeah. Sure. Those are the four actors that I recognized. My friend who I went to see this with actually recognized the kid from the Book of Henry, which came out last year and apparently got terrible reviews as well. I don't so. know what that is. And... It's the movie... Well, it... The Book of Henry was a movie directed by Colin Trevorrow, who did Jurassic World and was going to do Episode Nine originally, but then Book of Henry got such bad reviews, everyone was like, Disney, you can't have this guy direct your movie, and Disney was like, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the only, like, four, I guess, actors slash actresses that I recognized. I didn't really recognize the main guy, or, or Nettles, who's the only guy whose name I actually know. <laughs> Uh, his death, God. Weirdly enough, the the kind of CIA villain whose name I also don't recognize, uh, remember, was in an episode of NCIS that I watched like the day after watching this movie. So that was kind of weird. Yeah, well, every actor gets their you know one episode on like NCIS or CSI or like Law and Order. <laughs> True, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I guess you know. I guess that leads us into talking about. The experience, and yeah. and I went to a pretty sketchy theater <laughs> because it was cheap because it still worked with my movie pass card, which I still have for some reason. I don't know why I haven't canceled it because it kind of sucks now. Yeah, uh, yeah I've I've been reading actually about the changes that they've made to it, and and how like an unsustainable model it was like when they first introduced it, and they're just like this yeah. will work out if we play our cards right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I went to the theater, and the movie was supposed to start. It started, like, three minutes late. And nice. basically, this this was just great, because I don't know what the hell was going on, but this curtain lowered over the screen. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> I just heard a person, like, I guess going on, quote, stage, unquote, and, like, adjusting the aspect ratio of the screen <laughs> manually, and then walking off. <laughs> And then the curtain immediately raised. This was like not a minute later. The curtain raised. And I was like, what's going on here? And 
Yeah, that was basically the <laughs> biggest thing that I took away from this movie was that pre-movie was better than the actual movie. <laughs> Got some pretty good trailers too, but I don't remember what they were. And the movie started and everything was just downhill from there. <laughs> yeah, I went to, uh, I think, slightly larger theater. And, you know, as soon as I sat down, I could tell the people next to me were going to be obnoxious throughout the entire thing. And they were. Every single stupid joke in this movie, every unfunny little quip and just minor thing that they threw in just got snickers like <laughs> from these people sitting next to me. Pretty sure that would have made the movie better. Yeah, it did. It, it honestly did. Left their trash there, unsurprisingly, at the end. <laughs> Which really ticked me off. But yeah, no, I got we got some uh, some good trailers. I saw, I mean, I haven't been keeping up with the movie, but I saw a trailer for uh, James Wan's Aquaman. And, you know, that actually looks really cool. This uh, is coming from someone who like, I didn't get an Aquaman trailer. Hates superhero <laughs> movies. That. It looks really cool, actually. Like good enough for me to actually go and see it. And like, wow. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been pretty much hyped for Aquaman since we watched. What did we watch in this podcast? James uh, Bond, Insidious. Insidious. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm also really excited for Shazam. Actually, I don't even you know, know what that is. It's another superhero movie. The star is Zachary Levi, who played the main character in Chuck. Weirdly enough. Huh. Yeah, I got some other trailers. Interestingly, so we had this trailer for uh, for Venom, and then this yeah, yeah, we got the Venom trailer. Yeah, this trailer for uh, this movie called I forget what it was called, but it's about like this. And it looks very surreal. It's about these this guy who's planning on committing a murder, and he lives on like an island or something. God, and it looks really cool. Actually, it looked really cool. It was it was like Plymouth. I think it's called just called Plymouth. So then we and then after that we got a trailer for Overlord. Do you know what that is? No, I know what it is, but I haven't yeah. seen the trailer for it. Looks like one of the worst movies in years. It legitimately <laughs> looks like one of the worst movies in years. And the people sitting next to me were like, after watching these cool trailers for like Aquaman and and uh, Plymouth or whatever that actually look, you know, semi decent. They're like, yeah, you know, those other trailers. Well, uh, the doing- Venom trailer is pretty bad. I don't know which Venom trailer you got, but we got the one that ends with Venom being like, "I'm gonna tear your head off and your arms and your legs." Yeah. And then you'll just be yeah. drifting in the wind, like a turd in the yeah. wind. Yeah, that's the one I got. And there's people sitting next to me. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, those other trailers weren't really doing it for me. But, uh, you know, overall, I would watch that. Like, that looks pretty good. They're one of those people who only watch bad movies and, like, these are the greatest movies ever made, <laughs> aren't they? Yeah, I don't remember what trailers we got. We got Venom. We got, got an Alita trailer. Oh, we got <laughs> Alita. <laughs> the uncanny is real. <laughs> we only got, God. I think three trailers at the theater I went to which was pretty nice because the other movie theaters around your show like six trailers before the movie starts yeah although the movie theater I went to this is just a side note I saw Mission Impossible there which was on a different screen and the screen Mission Impossible on was right above the parking lot the parking lot's like underneath the theater and so when cars are driving through the parking lot they're like (laughs) theater shakes (laughs) it adds a whole new dimension to, to the movie Anyway, movie starts, and it starts the exact same way, sort of, that the first Predator started with a, with a Predator spaceship crashing onto Earth, except this time we actually, like, see the spaceship crash and the Predator get out. Yeah, at least there's no, like, pretense in this of, like, hiding the Predator as if it's some sort of horror movie, which it's not. Uh, my know? friend said this movie might have worked better if the sec- we didn't, hadn't seen the second Predator ship and there was, like, a big twist in the movie that there was a second Predator. And, I, you know, I'm inclined to agree with that statement, actually. Because right off the bat, we see actually two Predator I mean, ships. The first ship is being chased by a larger Predator ship. But even then, like, it, that wouldn't have made the movie good. Like, there's so many other problems with this. That no, but it would have made the reveal a lot better. <sighs> sure, I guess. I mean, you need something to, like, actually care about when that quote-unquote <laughs> reveal even happens. So I don't, I don't know if this would do that. Well, Maybe a little more. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, crashes sort of. And, they, they, you know, they bring Predator back to... Um, Central America, I guess, because that's where this one sort of starts. Yeah, but it doesn't remain there for long. No, this I, movie goes all over the place, actually. Yeah, it does. Although I remember I remember reading a quote by one of the executives who was like, you know, we're really hyped for this movie. It's like Predator in Suburbia, and it's going to be great. And I was just like... Yeah, you know, when they were sort of driving around and going to the football field and whatever, I, I, I really did question, like, was it a great idea to, to put bring the Predator franchise to the suburbs. Right. (laughs) But I mean, right off the bat, I actually really liked the soundtrack for this. And this might just be, I might just be like overhyping this because the rest of the movie was so bad, but I actually thought the soundtrack for this was pretty good. Yeah. It brings back the Predator theme, which was 
really nice. I actually noticed it in the middle of the movie. I know in the Predator episode we were talking about how like the Predator theme is like really noticeable, but none, <laughs> neither of us could remember what it sounded like. <laughs> but in this movie, I actually recognized it's like, oh, that's what the Predator theme sounds like. Yeah. And I looked up the guy who did the soundtrack for this, and I'm forgetting his name right Henry now. Henry Jackman. Yeah, Henry Jackman. He's done a, a bunch of pretty prominent things. Right. Yeah. I looked up his name, too, because I also wanted to mention that I thought the soundtrack was, like, pretty good. Uh, just as, like, a sample of some of the things he's done. He did Wreck-It Ralph, X-Men First Class, Kingsman The Secret Service, Second Kingsman as well, <laughs> The Winter Soldier, you know, so. Yeah. He's got a quite, a quite a storied resume. Anyway, this is where the movie starts to immediately go downhill because the guy, uh, the, the, there's a sniper. See a sniper just talking at the uh, normal uh, level, normal voice level. <laughs> well, I guess that's a good thing about He's being like, a sniper is you could do that because you're like miles away from your target, I guess. I don't know why I'm justifying this actually. But and, he, uh, yeah, the, the, the first line of dialogue in this is like a really... Bad? Uh, it's, it's like a, a very not... Not, I don't know what the word is like not Unfunny. subtle info dump like so you mean to tell me that these drug cartel members are here and I'm gonna shoot them or something like it's it's something equally well, like so as the, clunky well the guy's that. like oh they're not gonna show and they're like no no he'll show we'll take bets on it he's like so just so that we can be clear you're taking <laughs> bets on whether these dangerous drug lord cartels <laughs> are gonna bring the the prisoner here to this drug exchange right <laughs> yeah that was it Anyway, the and predator then, ship yeah. crash lands, and then he steals the predator's helmet and armor, and he like mails it. But then, it's then the this is the immediate <laughs> moment that I knew the movie was gonna suck. Is because he like puts this little orb that like turns him invisible into this jar of whiskey, and then he swallows it. And I was like, why? Well, like why? right as soon as he does that, you're like, all right, that's gonna let him use it for the rest of the movie, like on command. But also, like, why is that gonna like? He should just keep it in his pocket or something, right? But I mean. You know that moment when you're watching a bad movie and you're like, you realize that it's a bad movie and you go like, how much longer is left in this? <laughs> yeah, this moment where he downs the, the whiskey with the little orb thing, that was, this was that moment for me. Yeah, and the answer's and like an hour and a half. it's like less than five minutes into the movie. Yeah, the is like an hour and 40 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And then we meet his kid and just right off the bat, I was like, I turned to my friend and I was like, I already hate this kid. <laughs> Well, because they're in, like, chess club, and there's, like, some bullies, I guess, pull the fire alarm, and they come in and, like, knock all the chess pieces off the table, and the kid's, like, having a breakdown because the noises are too loud, right. which, by the way, doesn't happen again for the rest of the movie, even though there are, like, much louder noises <laughs> than this yeah, fire alarm. That's a good point. And Maybe it's the shrillness of it. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> don't know why I'm defending this, but... Anyway, they show that he's, like, autistic and, like... I guess a pretty good way, but he like picks oh, up like all, a, yeah. all the chess pieces and he puts them all back into their original places. Right. Which was, I guess, like the best part about this, I guess. But then like he goes home and this mailman's like, hey, what's up, kid? Your dad like forgot to pay for his P.O. box. So here's a box. And the kid like takes the box inside and like opens it. And he really like sh shames the guy for being a mailman, right? He's like, "My dad's a soldier, so you can be here and safe and be a yeah. mailman." And I was just like, "Wow, <laughs> asshole!" <laughs> Which, by the way, kids can be assholes. I'm like, That's... as this movie shows. Yeah. <laughs> and also, his mom comes home, and like you can tell, his mom's like trying really hard to like make ends meet for this kid because she like brings home these costumes, and she's like. Hey, I got you some costumes to wear for Halloween. I mean, He's you like, can tell the mom is like trying to replace like her being there for the kid with like material goods, you know? Yeah. Which like is un I mean, it's unfortunate now that like a lot of parents have to do that, but like also like what are you gonna do? Like, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I just really felt bad for her, honestly. Because then the kids like they're still gonna recognize me, and she's like trying really hard. She's like, I also got you some like books. Like, for German, he's like, I already learned German or whatever he says. And I'm like, wow. Really? I didn't catch that at all. Yeah, because she's like, oh, like, you're working on that book? And he's like, oh, I finished it already. And it's like, wow. Just, anyway, yeah, I feel really bad for her. And she's like, I got these two costumes. And the kid's like, oh, they're still going to know it's me. Like, underneath the costume, the bullies are still going to know. And then he opens the box with the Predator helmet and you immediately yep. realize that he's going to wear the Predator helmet on Halloween. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> I mean, right away, it's it's already just sort of a, 
a questionable decision to ship this alien tech that the government is after to like your family. Well, I he mean, says later, later on, later like, on yeah. like, oh man, like I sent it to a PO box just for the specific purpose, and like, but even that is like such a questionable decision. And also, like, <laughs> he didn't pay the rent for the PO box. <laughs> Anyway, and, we cut to, like, this government lab. Yeah, but... Well, yeah, this is when we meet so Olivia Munn's character, who I don't remember her name, so I'm just going to call her Olivia Munn for the rest of the movie. Yeah, the scientist woman. She's, like, apparently a biologist. They introduce her the same way they do it in the movie Arrival from two years ago, where the government shows up and is like, hey, look, we need your help. Except it was done way better in Arrival, <laughs> because they movie actually... have been meaning to watch for two years. Because they actually explain, like, hey, you still got government clearance because you worked on this other project. That's why we came to you first. Whereas I mean, they, in this movie, they just show up and they're like, hey, and then she reveals that the reason why they came for her is because she wrote a letter to the president when she was like eight. No, I mean, that, that that was her like giving her backstory, right? And this is this lands like, it doesn't land. She gives like her backstory like, yeah, you know, when I was eight, I was really interested in animals. I wrote this letter to the president telling him if, uh, if they ever found a space animal, they should call me. And I mean, that's obviously not the only reason why they brought her in, but that was like the start of her biological career. Yeah. Or biology career. Yeah. Okay, long story short, the, like a, the Predator escapes. I mean, we, we can just bring this up now because well, that line of dialogue sort of fits into this, but this felt like a uh, like a sitcom, like a comedy, right? I mean, like... Are you talking about we took a vote, Predator's cooler, f*** yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all right, this, this is actually like a big thing that I actually really disliked about this movie is that I felt like a parody of the original Predator, honestly. Because there's all these things like, you know, this isn't technically a predator. It's actually a sports hunter. And they pointed out like a couple times. I was like, can you just shut yeah, up Olivia already? Yeah, Olivia character points this out. And then the government CIA guy, this is going to be really difficult without everybody's names, is like, well, we took a vote in Predator's Cooler. And yeah. <laughs> but then there's, <laughs> but there's even that line later on that, that they, it was a reference to the original Predator where, where the main oh, character- Oh, get to the choppers? No, no, well, I mean, that one was actually done pretty well because it wasn't like played up like you thought, it, like I thought it was going to be. Like I knew it, get to the chopper was going to be in this, but I thought it was going to be a, a moment where they like zoom in on someone's face and like, get to the chopper. But no, it was actually just sort of a subtle line, which I appreciated. The moment I'm talking about is when near the end, when the main guy goes like, what? Uh, what's the line? Like, what are you? Like, just like Arnold does in the first one. But then he's like, you know what? And the predator starts saying something. He's like, you know what? Shut the F up. And just shoots it in the face. <laughs> yeah, well, there are a lot of other reasons why this movie feels like a parody of the first one, not the least of which is that it starts the exact same way. And also that everybody makes incredibly stupid decisions that they made. And stupid jokes. Just every single line is just some dumb joke, honestly. And I, I disliked that a lot. Well, it's because none of the jokes land. I mean, if all the jokes had landed, I would have been like, yeah, this movie's awesome. But none of them even, land. Even, they all, them, all of them just sound really stupid. There were like two that got a chuckle out of me. We're getting to the first one like pretty soon. <laughs> the the obnoxious people sitting next to me laughed at like every single one of these jokes. Every single stupid joke that just made me want to shoot myself they were like <laughs> but i mean the, the, the jokes not landing is definitely a major negative but just they're being joke like this is actually a, a big problem for me in like modern movies is that they're so like tongue-in-cheek honestly like nothing is actually i mean th there's just this feeling where like you know if it if this sucks like it's so tongue-in-cheek and we like so humorous anyway that like it doesn't matter we're doing this on purpose <laughs> i think you're just watching like blockbusters i think blockbusters are like that but i think yeah. like every yeah, I mean, other no. movie is like not like that at all in no, fact I, mean, I think other movies have gone the exact opposite direction no i mean yeah you're i mean you're right like that's so. a big problem for me in like superhero movies i mean the, and i mean that's like, a big problem for me with the new star wars too is that it kind of feels like that I mean, the thing about superhero movies is that, like, I think Marvel was the one who really popularized that. And, you know, I really blame Marvel for their superhero bubble right now. It's, like, entirely their fault. Yeah, I mean, it actually is. I was thinking about this after watching the Aquaman trailer. Is like, you look at the movies DC has put out in, like, the last 10 years. I mean, they're not great movies, but it's more. I mean, a lot fault. of people would argue that, like, Dark Knight is, like, the greatest movie of all time. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the Dark Knight sort of trilogy, I guess, is sort of a standout from that. I actually do like kind of appreciate that movie, but yeah, what I mean, what you're describing and, and what I just described is definitely 
you know, Marvel and, and Disney's fault. Disney. And, and they're doing like the same thing. This, they're doing the same thing with the new Star Wars, right? Either seven and eight. I'm not sure about Rogue One. I mean, in fact, I'm pretty sure Rogue One doesn't go this route. But No, Rogue One kind of goes the opposite direction, as does Solo, actually. Well, Solo, Solo reminds me a lot of Ocean's Eleven, actually. Uh, but huh. the good one. <laughs> <laughs> The 2003 one or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah, 2001. The, the, re- the remake. Yeah. One of the few times that a Hollywood remake was better than the original. <laughs> but, I mean, you just look at episode eight and, like, that's a major problem with that movie, in my opinion. I mean, I have other problems with episode eight. I think, but oh, I, I do, too. I think a lot of people's problems with episode eight are that, like, they had, the, the, like, episode eight didn't live up to their fan theories. But I have <laughs> other problems with episode eight besides that. Anyway, what happens next? Oh, yeah, the Predator escapes. The Predator escapes, and we get totally baited because it's an R-rated movie, and Olivia Munn gets naked in the scene, but we don't see anything. And that was my friend's <laughs> biggest complaint about this movie. He was like, we got totally baited when Olivia <laughs> Munn took her clothes off, and I was like, I don't care. The Predator, like, leaves her alone because she's naked and unarmed, she says later on, but they never actually, like, use that again. Yeah, this Predator, I mean, as you find out later, this is the one who's trying to help out humans. Yeah. But decides to kill everyone in its path just for fun, I guess. <laughs> it well, obviously it's it's helmet and it's like wrist gauntlet are missing because what's his name? The main character stole them. So he picks right. up like an older predator moss they have like in this facility. I guess this facility is like supposed to be the evolution of that weird government offshoot that showed up in Predator 2. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Which also featured another actor who was in Chuck, so that's kinda weird. Wow, all these weird Chuck connections. <laughs> Maybe this is pointing to a a Chuck, Chuck podcast. <laughs> we could oh, we Chuck's should do a Chuck no, podcast. No, no, Chuck's no, actually no, a no. good television show. No, have fun with that. <laughs> I hated in this movie how uh, I've been trying to I've actually been trying not to say hated and said disliked, but like yeah, I freaking hated in this movie how they like go back and like explain the predator biology like what's up with those dreads and they're like they're they're probably sensory receptors and stuff like that you know <laughs> i didn't care too much for it didn't really pay attention to it either olivia munn's character is like really freaked out that there's human dna in this predator but the only way they go with that is that they're like i guess they're hybridizing which we already found out yeah in they don't like really <laughs> touch on that in an interesting way i mean it comes up as a big deal later on but like the reveal of like their all the reveals in this movie are like, oh, okay, like, so what, you know? Well, I mean, again, it's it's like all things we saw in Predators, and it was done better in Predators, which is weird to say. Yeah, you know, I was... <laughs> as soon as the movie was over, I texted you, like, this makes Predators look like a masterpiece. Because I was thinking, like, you know, Predators wasn't a great movie, but, like, compared to this, to this like, Predators was is like really good compared to this like god well yeah i mean it's it's this movie is is it took a lot of ideas from predator but took a lot of ideas from predators too like there being two classes of predator that was like done predators right. first you know in predators we find out from Lawrence fishburne's character Predator has a long-running and very well-known tradition of not having memorable character names uh, Lawrence fishburne's character explains like Every year they come back looking a little different. They like, and they bring all these species here to hunt, and then they come back like integrating the features of the right. species that they fought. Yep. To become better predators. So it's like, this is all things we've seen before. Better. Uh, whatever. The kid like wears the helmet out and he like accidentally kills a dude because the dude <laughs> yeah. throws a rock at his Not helmet. Not only kills him, blows up his entire house. We're also forgetting this whole scene where we meet the like main cast of people who you know are going to be dead by the end of the movie. Right. <laughs> And they're, you know, unlike previous Predator movies, they're all people who are, I don't want to say crazy, but like the government deems them crazy, I guess. Right. So we have, you know, the one guy who tried to kill himself and we have the other guy who killed his entire own squadron. squadron. They all have various like problems as, you know, as to why they're one going through One guy's got military Tourette's. Therapy. And you find out later on, this was a pretty cool moment, I think. You find out later on that, that this guy with... Tourette's was the only survivor of the, the like unit that the other guy fired upon, friendly fired upon. Right. And that's why they're like friends now. And then there's also Nettles. I mean, you find yeah, you find out also later that the one guy like first because first he's like, Oh, I tried to kill my CO and you find out later that he actually tried to kill himself or whatever. 
Yeah, like I mean, was, like none of this is done like that well, but like in concept, sure, these things are good. Nettles, the only guy whose name I remember. Yeah, what was Nettles there for? I forget. <laughs> <laughs> they they like everyone they, had. A they reason. do explain why Nettles is there, but I don't remember yeah. why. I don't remember why the the Irish guy was there either. Oh yeah, the Irish guy. He was just. I feel like they just forgot about his character for half the movie because there are scenes <laughs> like, for example, the the scene where what's her face wakes up. He's not in that scene. He's just not there. I guess you can just explain it away as like he's in this other part of the, he's in some other part of the hotel, but like it just feels like they forgot his character and sh- and just inserted him into various scenes, you know. Yeah, they like rescue Olivia Munn's character from the base because they get taken to the base because she wants to talk with the leader of dude, and uh, none of it's really interesting. But this is when they get to the choppers. There's line like 20, 20 yo mama jokes. Yeah, it's annoying. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Keegan Michael Key's whole character was to make jokes. <laughs> That's how they introduced him. They're like, he fired on his own squad. Now he makes jokes. <laughs> That's literally what they said. Anyway, Olivia Munn's character wakes up in this hotel room and amongst all these these guys, and she like grabs the gun, and and Key's like, I told you she would go for the gun. <laughs> Pay up, everybody. <laughs> then she pulls the trigger and tries to kill them. Lean dude, lead dude, but they took the bullets out. Anyway, the one of the first. Or one of the like three jokes in this movie that actually made me laugh. The first one is is right now <laughs> when she's about to leave and Lito's like, they're going to kill you. And Nettles just goes, oh, they're going to kill you? I'm so sorry. I don't know why that was funny to me. I guess just the frankness of how he said it, but... <laughs> what? That's <laughs> <laughs> f- okay. The funniest thing in this movie to me also involved Nettles. <laughs> yeah. Is later on. <laughs> One of, the, one of the other quote jokes on quote that made me laugh was was what you were going to talk about. Yeah, <laughs> actually, all their deaths were funny in some way or the other. I'm going to fast forward through a little bit, but they go find the kid, and then the predator yeah. dogs show they up. They make it. They they go on like this road trip that we don't see on screen, like <laughs> to go back to. I don't think they ever say where the kid or the guy lives right you know it's just they show the middle the name America, of the middle school which is obviously like a fictional place right yeah and, but yeah the, they have this entire chase sequence and the predator dogs come back but they look a lot bigger and bulkier than they yeah. ever did for some reason mm-hmm. they blow one up which is okay i mean they shoot one in the face yeah they they shoot one through the yeah, eye i think yeah through the eye basically and that, I guess, gives it brain damage and makes it start acting like a an Earth dog. Yeah, I guess. Which is like kind of dark when you think about it. Like, and they actually use this word. They're like, "You lobotomized that dog, and now it's friendly." <laughs> yeah, I didn't really understand this whole thing with the dog. Honestly, especially because whenever it shows up, they just throw this ball to make it go fetch the ball and get out of this scene. Yeah. <laughs> The one time it actually helps you know? is when it brings in that grenade. Yeah. Maybe they wrote it in so like, oh, shoot. Like, how is she going to make it out of this? We have her handcuffed to a chair. And <laughs> they're like, all right, here's what we have to do. We have to write in this predator dog. And they found it like 20 minutes ago. The guy shot it through the... <laughs> well, there's a scene. There's a scene where you can... This is actually like, you know, the reshoots I was talking about, where you can actually really tell that there was a reshoot done. Huh. Because like continuity wise, there's like a huge problem between the two scenes. Because I guess they go on this road trip, but you actually see none of it. They just immediately show up like at the guy's house with his right. estranged wife. Yep. And then he's like, "I'm gonna go find my kid," and he leaves. And all the other people are like, "Yeah, we want, we don't want to come." And he's like, "Well, you guys can stay here and watch TV then, or you can come with me." And you know, this is whole scene where they like convince the people to go, and then they like all like saunter out really slowly and then it like hard cuts to them like getting into an RV but they're like right, yeah. and they're all just like really just sold on finding this kid now and it's like that scene in the house was like either that was clearly a reshoot or the scene where they all got in the RV and they're like really sold on this was a reshoot because like <laughs> the continuity between the two scenes doesn't work at all yeah you know I actually did notice that um, as soon as the, the RV showed up I was like <laughs> so they have this this yeah. camper van <laughs> <clears throat> that's right before they go find the kid they find the kid yeah th- th- right they find the kid throughout all of this you know the the 
the the main guy is like talking to his son about how like you know the difference between a soldier and a murderer is is whether they enjoy it or not and they like they make that turn out into a joke later on and and there's all this stuff like the guy kills people like in front of his kid and like jokes about it and like you this kid is going to be drawn like he's obviously not thinking of the therapy he's going to have to pay for later in life for this kid you know well the kid comes out of it completely okay honestly the kid comes out of it better than he was going into it <laughs> Which is just dumb in and of itself, but yeah, yeah the mom like, makes a line about how the kid plays first person shooters to like connect with his dad because the dad's like, "Look, I told you no first person shooters for the kid," and she was like, "Well, maybe he plays them to connect with his dad," and he's like, "Oof." So, yeah, I think the kid's just okay with it. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> the, <laughs> all right, the one actual <laughs> joke that I kind of did laugh at is the. Um, when what's his face was like, you know, if you if your mom's vagina was a video game, it'd be rated E for everyone. <laughs> I kind of chuckled at that, and you mentioning the the video game recalled that for me. But hey, whatever. Well, I mean, speaking of jokes, we get a really poor, tasteless joke calling the autistic kid retarded. Right? Oh now. yeah, right. I mean, the way it's done is like, and this was really, it's actually really weird the way it's done, like. Yeah, because the, the guys are, like, joking around with each other, and the guy's like, ha ha, you're retarded. And they're like, hey, don't use that word. Like, the, the dad of the kid's like, hey, don't use that word. And it's the dad, yeah. It's, it's and the then the, 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 the guy who gets called retarded turns to his buddy and he's like, yeah, man, don't call me, don't use the word retarded. His kid's retarded. And I was yeah. like, what? What? Yeah. <laughs> Just a very strange sequence. Yeah, and it felt really tasteless. And, and but I mean. And weird. Like, and that's the thing with this movie. Like, <clears throat> so much of this movie is just stupid little asides like that, like stupid jokes that don't even have to be in the movie. Like the when the when they're bringing when they're bringing the uh, biologist into the government facility, and the guy's going like, uh, "Is this room actually the the haunted house thing?" Where he's like, "Are the walls actually stretching?" And the other guy's like, "Really, every freaking time." Like, I mean, I was like, shout out to that dude for calling <laughs> it out, at least. But, like, just the fact that that's in the movie, just, what, like, what is this? <laughs> I mean, that's the whole movie, though. I know, and, like, just take out, take out all of that stuff, and this movie is, like, probably half an hour shorter. Or more. <laughs> I mean, that's the movie they decided to make, though, so <laughs> I tried to make it more of a comedy, I guess. Shane Black's strength is comedy, I think. I think that's really why this movie fails, is that Shane Black tried to make a Shane Black movie and Fox tried to make a Predator movie, and then in the end we got this weird... Mix that didn't do yeah. either of them right. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, when have they ever done Predator right other than Predator? <laughs> <laughs> Look, you know, I'll give this movie credit for at least being better than Predator 2. I would be watching this over Predator 2 any day. Yeah. Because at least this movie wasn't boring like Predator 2. At least this movie didn't feel an hour and 40 minutes long like Predator 2 did. Oh, to me it did. By the end of this, this movie felt longer than it actually was to me. But whatever. (laughs) I don't care about this movie enough to... (sighs) To go on about that. I forget what happens next. I think they they, the government, they take the kid. They take the kid because the guy realizes the kid's drawing a map to the alien spaceship. They go to the alien spaceship. By the way, the first predators died. The guy... Okay, right, this is the other the thing larger predator. that like, really annoyed me about this movie is that the CIA guy just starts spouting off... And, the, and Olivia Munn's character, the biologist, starts spouting off like information about the predator that they could not reasonably know like at all like the guy's just like yeah, oh true. yeah you know we expect that this guy came here to help humanity and presumably there's something on the ship that's going to help humanity with uh, with the predators it's like you well, don't I mean, know that well, I mean, you they, don't know that no, I mean they make these guesses and assumptions and they turn out to be right and that's a little off putting yeah but know? they also make like definitive statements like the yeah, biologist sure, I mean, starts making all these statements about like, oh, the you know the predator's been here two times before, and he like thrives in heat, hot environments. Which like she has no way of knowing because she encountered the predator for what all of thirty minutes before it escaped, and nowhere yeah, in those thirty minutes was she the, told about any of that. Maybe she read the file on the the LA incident. <laughs> but like, yeah, I mean, there there are all these things where like. Yeah, the characters say these things, and they're really just... They're just guessing, and they're just making assumptions and stuff, and those turn out to be right. Probably, 
the the result of you know like you mentioned the rewrites and the the story problems that this movie went through you know yeah the the guy reveals that they like contacted Harvard and gave them a massive amount of government money to decode the predator language. <laughs> oh yeah, this was this was uh, interesting to me because this is the first time I think that we get subtitles for the predators. Mm-hmm. I yeah, I don't think predators did that. I think you're right. And you know the guy mentioned you know gave a billion Actually, dollars. I think, no, I think we got subtitles in predators. I I can't remember. I think we did right at the end when the big predator kills the little predator. Maybe, yeah. I'm not sure. But here's the thing. This guy's like, yeah, we give a billion dollars to the Harvard Linguistics Program to uh, to give us these subtitles. <laughs> to essentially, I mean, essentially, like, yeah. that's what it is. But this, the punctuation in the subtitles is, like, actually really funnily inconsistent. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but, like, some of the things are punctuated. Sometimes there's periods. Sometimes there's not. I didn't, and, but yeah. I will now if I ever watch this again, which I won't. <laughs> yeah. The I, mean, big I proofread ab- yeah. a lot of stuff, so like I just noticed that kind of stuff, and I was like, "Really? Like it's such a simple thing to punctuate your shit in incons- consistently, and you don't do it." You know that actually like reminds me of the one problem I did have with the soundtrack to this movie is that they play the Predator theme like not when the Predator's on the screen. Like the first time you hear the Predator theme is when they're like going to the well, base. That's, that's interesting. I mean, it might like the Predator is always present even when he's not there. You know, I don't know. I think that's a stretch. <laughs> Or like this movie's all about the predator, so you know, I think that's also a stretch. <laughs> they did. I feel. I feel like this movie tried to make it all about the kid. If the kid yeah. is such a yeah, such a because the, then the kid. biologist is like, you know, some people think that autism is the next stage in human evolution. And I was like, citation needed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. I didn't know if that was like an actual trend that people are starting to think, but I mean, when the, when she said that, I was like, oh, if, my thought was like, you know, if that's like a common idea now, I, uh, it's not something that I've heard. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but I don't know. I feel like this movie conflated being autistic with being a super genius. Like, I, yeah. I feel like those are yeah. it did mutually exclusive like you don't ha- you don't have to be an autistic to be a super genius and you don't have to be a super genius to be autistic right. i guess is what i'm I mean, saying it's, it's almost like it's almost stereotypical right because you think of like the stereotype of like an autistic usually kid and it's like mm-hmm. they can't really do much well or like they have poor social skills or yeah, they like have poor social they're, skills but or, they're like or like not really that smart school wire like get bad grades but like mm-hmm. you ask them like what was the first monday in 1383 and they like can give you the exact date yeah. or whatever or something like that and the know? accountant did this too <laughs> the main character was like on the spectrum and he was like the super god genius level <laughs> accountant and it was like these movies all conflate like being autistic with being a super genius which I don't know. It's stereotypical and also, like, again, they're, like, not necessarily linked. Right. Although I guess maybe it's a case of, like, most autistic kids are geniuses in some way and it's, like, more likely or overwhelmingly likely. You know, I don't know the actual biology behind this. Uh, so maybe they are the next stage in human evolution is what I'm saying. Maybe, maybe, the, maybe the future is that all humans will just be autistic. But if everyone's autistic... Then no one will be. No, and then, you know, I really, don't, I really don't think that's how that works. <laughs> well, so the bigger predator blows up the spaceship, and then like this is when the people start dying because they're trying to fight the bigger predator and kill it. All the deaths for these people were 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 funny. The CIA guy's yeah. death was the funniest because it came completely out of nowhere, and they like never mentioned it again. <laughs> He's wearing like the predator shoulder rocket launcher thing. <laughs> And halfway through this fight with the bigger predator, it just turns and shoots him in the head. <laughs> the Irish guy, like all his scenes, his his death felt like they just shoehorned in at the last minute because they forgot his character was in the movie. He dies first. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I kind of liked that the two buddies, you know, Key yeah, the, and uh, the Tourette's Michael guy. Jane's Thomas Jane's character, sorry, like die together. That's a moment, and it's shot, like, interestingly, too, where they both, you know, shoot each other because they're both dying. That's a moment where, like, if this were a better movie and if these were more interesting characters, that could have worked. Mm-hmm. I agree. I mean, that was one of the few moments in this movie I was like, wow, 
there's a better movie here. Because <laughs> <laughs> they both shoot each other like as like mercy killing. Right. You didn't get that. Because the one guy is like has a spike through his stomach and he's he's hanging from this tree and the other guy is just the other guy's stomach was like dying. blown up by like a rocket. Right. They both shoot each other. But I think the death that we're both eager to get to and the funniest one of all <laughs> was Nettles. <laughs> All right, so here's the context. They're on, they're, on, they're on the Predator spaceship, and by on, I mean, like, literally on top of. Yeah, the, the kid's in the spaceship. The Predator takes the kid now. Right. And then, you know, the biologist is like, just taking the kid because the kid's next stage in evolution. <laughs> right. And the the main character, the dad, and um, the guy. Yeah. Actually, before we continue, I want to bring up something that, again, would have been, sorry for interrupting, would have been good in, like, a Predator movie where, you know, the Predator's like, oh, I want to take... You know, whatever the main character's last name, and the main character assumes it's Mc- him. McKenna. McKenna yeah. as like a trophy because he's a true warrior or whatever. And he assumes it's him, but then the predator takes the kid and he's like, damn it, I thought he wanted me. And the biologist is like, no, he just said McKenna. So clearly he wants he like wants the kid because the next stage of evolution, which is like that double take switch out like would have been better in a better movie. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah. It's like in Lord of the Rings when the one guy is like, you won't be killed by a woman or like something like that. I forget what it is. Or like well, in Macbeth, where he's yeah, like, yeah, Macbeth, where he's like, we won't be killed by a man or like someone births by a woman, and then it's revealed that he had that like the guy C-section. was like born by like a C-section, which is like <laughs> the worst loophole ever because he was still born out of a woman's womb. But anyway, and then they're, but they do it again like better in Lord of the Rings, and I forget the actual like context of it, where the guy's like, you won't, you'll be killed by, you won't be killed by any man, and it was that was the the lady who was pretending to be a man or whatever. I forget yeah. what it was for the, the actual like thing. I think it was something like that. Strangely enough, the other thing that Lord of the Rings like takes from Macbeth and does better is like the moving forest because you know how they're like you're, you mm-hmm. know when the forest moves you're, you're gonna die, Macbeth, and he's like oh that'll never happen. And they, like cut down the trees and like walk forward with the tree. Okay, whatever. <laughs> we'll talk about that when we stop putting off Lord of the Rings for this podcast. <laughs> Well, we'll be putting it off for a while. Anyway, continue with Nettle's death. They're on <laughs> the right, spaceship. So they're on the spaceship. They're on top of the spaceship. And we get a scene that's clearly reshoots again because all of a sudden the kid has a walkie talkie, even though we haven't seen a walkie talkie in this movie at no, all no, until we, this point. We have. Um, when when What's His Face steals the cop car, they communicate via walkie talkie. Huh. Yeah, would, uh, I so, don't even remember that. But, this, and, and, but we but, never see the kid with the walkie talkie. Right, true. And, and you pointed out, and I think this is. Might be a case of like in one version of the script they all had walkie talkies and one version they didn't and those two versions got spliced together somehow. You know? That or someone was like, "Yo, we need an explanation for how <laughs> McKenna knows that there's gonna be a force field around the spaceship," and they just shot that scene well, and shoved it in there. Well, here's the thing, all right. So McKenna, um, the guy who tried to kill himself and Nettles are on top of the spaceship, and this force field is enclosing the ship very slowly, right? <laughs> and I mean, it's not super slow, but it's, not, it's, it's slow enough it's, to avoid. It's slow enough where McKenna can, can sort dive of dive under, under it. it and the, the other guy jumps, jumps on, on top, top of it. it. And that, that, the way it's shot is actually very cool. It's sort of a slow motion thing where he jumps on top and it's actually yeah. done like fairly well, I think. But Nettles... <laughs> Nettles is there too, yeah, it, and he's it, like dual wielding. All right, he's just like ah uh, ah, uh, and the force, force field's closing in around him. He's just like shooting it in vain, and it just slices him in half. Yeah, and he, he had, had ample like, time. He had like a <laughs> solid ten seconds to make a decision about when he's going over or under, <laughs> and and the guy who tried to kill himself like yells Nettles. <laughs> And Nettles just stands there, and his legs just get chopped off, and he goes flying away. <laughs> Funniest moment of the movie. <sighs> uh, then the one guy sacrifices himself. Yeah, the guy who tried to kill himself kills himself <laughs> by God. jumping into the like jet engine that's powering the spaceship, and it lands. And then here's a scene that like completely blew my mind, because we see a shot of the biologist watching the spaceship fly away and it's like a solid two miles away at this point she's like watching it fly away and she's like damn it's like really far away i'm not gonna be able to help and then mckenna's fighting the big predator and then all of a sudden he's like about to be killed and then the big predator gets like shot in the back by the biologist and i'm like how did you traverse those freaking like five miles in like 10 minutes god i think when that happened in the movie i was i legitimately went what (laughs) This entire ending sequence 
kind of feels like the final, what, 10, 20 minutes of Predator, you know, where they're in this jungle and there's but, like, this waterfall into two area. Minutes. Sure, yeah, compressed into to a shorter amount of time and done much worse. Uh, but it just, and this is part of the reason why it felt like a parody to me. Well, what really drove home the parody was, I want to get to this because this is my favorite moment in the movie because it was just so dumb. I mean, this whole this whole sequence, in fact, is just so dumb. But McKenna is like promoted to captain again, and he's like he, now he's like leading the they government ki- base. They kill the predator. Yeah, they kill the predator. But now he's like leading this government base, and he goes, and his son is like working there, like on decoding the predator language because he's got like savant like skills at understanding predator. And the <sighs> this is. The scientist is like, yo, so uh, that smaller predator spaceship, like when it blew up, it like ejected this pod, like as a safety measure, because he was, he actually was trying to help us destroy the bigger predators because, you know, they come up with this whole theory that the predators are trying to take over Earth because of global warming, because like the Earth's going to be really hot and it'll be like perfect to support the predators. I mean, in our episode on the first three predator movies, we talk about like the ecological sort of stuff that's in the yeah. Predator movies a little bit. And, then, like, they kind of bring it back. So, like, good on them for, for trying to do that in a way. You yeah, know? but they, like, shoot a horn in this right. whole global warming thing. And it's, like, it's really off-putting. But then, like, the guy's like, oh, yeah, they, this pod ejected. And it turns out he really was trying to help us. And the kid, there's, like, they're building up to this huge reveal about what's going to be in this pod. They're, like, really hyping this up because they're all looking and it's opening. And the kid's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. It has a name. <laughs> and you're like, what is it? And the guy's like, what's the name? What's the name? And the kid's like, I guess you could call it the Predator Killer. And I'm like, what? It's like this power suit type thing that sort of takes over your body and makes you look like a Predator. Or like, yeah. It looks like Predator armor, basically. Yeah. And but this but is just this, the name. This is like, the name falls so flat. <laughs> the Predator Killer. Yeah, it's a little underwhelming. And I was like, oh my God. And the way the kid delivers it, too. He's like, he's so proud of it. But it sounds so dumb. He's like... The Predator Killer. <sighs> but, I mean, here's the thing, and this was actually really interesting to me, is, you know, in the last episode we talk about how, you know, where is the Predator franchise going to go? And we talk about, like, how it had to go to the Predator planet, right? Because, mm-hmm. like, the Predators can just keep coming to Earth and there's really nothing the humans can do to stop that from happening, right? And this opens the doors for a way for the for people to fight back, right? It opens does. the doors for yeah. sequels, basically. It's like obvious sequel bait, right. really. Yep. Because McKenna's like, that's my new suit. And I think it ends on that line. He's like, that's my new suit. Yeah. Smash cut to credits directed by Shane Black. <laughs> and, I mean, you know, if there is a sequel to this, one, I hope it's not as bad as this. I hope it can somehow manage to be a good movie. But, you know, we both contributed to this movie's box office. So, you know. <laughs> I really think that Shane Black tried to make a Shane Black movie. Fox tried to make a Fox movie. And just... It didn't work. Yeah, this is this is one of those moments where you just have to realize you got to give in to the man sometimes and, yeah. and bite the bullet. One of the two parties needed to cede control to the other party. And, <laughs> it wasn't going to be Fox. And, you know, it wasn't going to happen. And, you know, as much as they tried to make this movie work when they did all those reshoots, because they did like a couple months of reshoots, which if you don't know, is actually like... It's pretty normal for a Hollywood movie to do reshoots. Most movies actually do reshoots, but typically it's only pick up pick up shots, you know, linking shots, linking footage. It typically takes about a couple of weeks. You know, this movie went through like a couple like months of reshoots and it was kind of a big deal. Everyone was like, yeah, that's the instant we knew it was going to suck. <laughs> you know. And again, also the trailers made the movie seem way better than it was, even though the trailers looked pretty bad because the trailers like didn't feature the kid at all. Huh. So, which is like Maybe a weird they, like, like knew advertising. the kid was bad. Yeah. And just like got to keep this kid out of the trailers. I mean, that's what I was gonna say. Like, that's a weird advertising choice since the kid's like such an integral part of the plot of this movie. But maybe they knew. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I was just really like let down when I came out of this movie. I was like really disappointed when I came out of this movie because I was really hoping we were gonna get a good Predator movie out of this. And you know, we didn't. No. Oh, I wanted to mention the um, the oh, as the kids walking around on Halloween, you can see sort of a costume of 
that looks like the original red predator like chicken suit type thing <laughs> it was like nice call back there yeah i'm pretty sure that that would be intentional yeah i mean it, it rocks right in front of the camera so like yeah <laughs> uh i feel like i ragged on this movie enough yeah i, I really don't have anything good to say about it and so i don't want to just dwell on saying like yeah it sucked I mean, I liked the music. Yeah, that's that's. I was just and about I can to say that. see that's it. I can see where this could have been a good movie, which is the which is always honestly, in my opinion, the most disappointing part of watching a bad movie is seeing like all the things that could have been good, and then <laughs> realizing that it's actually in this bad movie instead. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that closes the cha- chapter. Closes. This chapter of Triple Play, the Predator chapter, for now, unless they make a third Alien vs. Predator movie and we watch that. <laughs> so, yeah. No emails this month, I think, to respond to. But if you would like to email us, you can reach us at the doctor at decadovegetable.com. Questions, comments, concerns, angry rants, love letters, your thoughts on Predator. You can find us on YouTube at Decorative Vegetable. You can find us on Apple Podcasts and Google Play at Triple Play. Be sure to leave a rating if you like the show. Check us on Facebook. Trust your doctor. Like us on Facebook. Also check us on Twitter at TYD Podcast and follow us on Twitter. And next month we're watching the first three Rocky movies. But until then, the end. <laughs>